So this is AP Classroom uh, Unit 9, Free Response Question B. Uh, I just want to look at number two, uh, the question number two from that section, uh, and just part C. That's a, it's a pretty complex question that has a lot of parts to it. It ties together a lot of things, really worth looking at in detail. So uh, this is also a no calculator question. So um, you're given a velocity vector, uh, 10 negative t sine pi t over 4. Uh, that's for some roller coaster or something. And they give you an initial position uh, at time t equals 0. The position is 0, 18. And then they ask us uh, during the interval 0 to 12, including the endpoints as a closed interval, what is the maximum value of y? So uh, this is similar to one of the questions in free response question A, we're really looking for an absolute maximum on a closed interval. You're looking for a maximum value. Um, we're not looking for a relative value. We want to know the largest value, so it's an absolute max, and it's on a closed interval. So anytime we're looking for an absolute max on a closed interval, all right, absolute max on closed interval, what we want to be thinking about is find the critical points and then check the endpoints. It's important, this is what a lot of people are missing, is the endpoints when you're looking at a closed interval absolute max. Because the absolute max could be at an endpoint. Um, and we're going to, we need to compare the y values at these points. So that's another part that sort of people uh, are missing. So uh, let's, we start by finding the critical points. So we start by solving y prime of t equals zero. So an important thing to understand is since they gave you a velocity vector, this is y prime right here. So this is x prime, this is y prime. So we don't have to do a derivative or an integral of that. They've already given you y prime. So our y prime is negative t sine of pi t over 4, and we need to solve that equal to zero. Now as long as we write this, by the way, that was worth one point uh, in the scoring. So if you got that, wrote that, you got one point. Now the next thing is to solve this, which is not trivial. So you really have a product of two uh, factors, and we know that uh, that product is equal to zero. So we just set each of the factors equal to zero, just like if it was a factored um, quadratic. It's not a quadratic, but the same principle holds. Either t is equal to zero, or a sine of pi t over four equals zero. So we have to ask ourselves, when is sine pi t over 4 equal to 0. So I like to think about the unit circle and think about when is the sine going to be 0. The sine is going to be 0 when uh, theta equals 0 and when theta equals pi. All right? But that theta that we're talking about is the pi t over 4. So what I'm really looking at is where is pi t over 4 equal to 0. And that gives me the solution t equals 0. Now some people, by the way, just right away went uh, pi t over 4 equals inverse sine of 0, which is 0, and got t equals 0 right away, which is nice and good, but it only gives you one of the solutions, and there are four. So what it doesn't account for is the coterminal angles as we go around here as t ranges from 0 to 12. So our next uh, point where theta is equal to 0 is at theta equals pi, so when pi t over 4 equals pi, so it's easy to solve that one and get uh, t equals 4. But this uh, parameter can keep going around. And so we can also look at uh, when theta equals 2 pi. There's a t equals 4 is what we've got to. We need to get up to t equals 12. So when uh, theta equals 2 pi, I have pi t over 4 equals 2 pi. So then you get t equals 8. And, but we're still not up to the 12, so we can go around one more time. And we can end up with... Um, uh, 3 pi, theta equals 3 pi, so I have pi t over 4 equals 3 pi, and that gives you t equals 12. So in fact, you have four solutions from this equation, one solution of this equation, which happens to be redundant with one of these solutions. So really, these are your only four solutions. These are your critical points uh, of y. So we have t equals 0, 4, 8, and 12. So now let's consider what's happening at each of those points. So uh, what I could do is go ahead and since since my critical points also happen to be endpoints, I've really got all the critical points and endpoints right now. 
So I could go ahead and find y values for every single one of these points. In fact, I already have y of 0, because uh, at t equals 0, uh, the position is 0, 18, so y of 0 is equal to 18. So I've already got one of them. Now, I need to find the others, but I don't have an explicit equation for y, so that becomes difficult. So the next thing I want to do is sort of look at these candidates and say, which ones of these could really be a... Um, a, an absolute max on the interval. So I can think about where, what is um, y prime, which is negative t sine pi t over 4, what is it doing at each of these points? So maybe a good way to do that would be to lay out a uh, number line and do a sine chart. So let's think about what the sine of negative t sine pi t over 4 is between 0 and 4. Well, we got that uh, t equals 4 by saying uh, theta equals pi. So from 0 to pi, that uh, theta is positive, so uh, the theta is in the first and second quadrants, so sine of theta is going to be positive. So sine of pi t over 4 is positive, but t itself is negative, so we have negative values for um, y prime from 0 to 4. Then when we go from uh, t equals 4 to t equals 8, that drops us down to this part of the unit circle, and I'm looking at signs that are negative, but t's that are negative, so I end up with y prime being positive. And I can keep going around and uh, look at my next set, and uh, 0, 4, 8, 12, I've got all of them yeah, there, yes, okay. So my next interval, uh, you can check and see that y prime is going to be negative. So now I'm looking for where does y prime change from positive to negative. Y prime changes from positive to negative right here at t equals 8. Um, at t equals 4, y prime is changing negative to positive, so that is not a max. And we can sort of eliminate that from our list. We can't eliminate the endpoints because I could have an endpoint max or min. Now, but if I think about what's going on with um, here, where I have uh, negative values for y prime leading up to 12, that means that uh, y has to be decreasing as it approaches 12. So in this whole interval from 8 to 12, y prime is negative, so y is decreasing. That means 12 cannot be a maximum because we decreased to get there. So everything before it is going to be larger than the value at 12. So that's how we can eliminate 12. So now we can see that our only candidate points are um, t equals 0 and t equals 8 are candidates for the absolute max. And that's where the next point was. If you identify t equals 0 and t equals 8 as your candidates, um, that was also one point. So that was the next point. You had to work pretty hard to get that, that next point. Um, so I'm going to break this video up into pieces because um, my equipment is unstable. Uh, and I'm going to continue this in a second video.